wanted to speak to me, Father. Oh, come in, Father Neil. Sit down. Now, you've been at St. Jude's some weeks now, Father Neil. Have you any complaints? About you, Father? <laughs> Well, I was thinking, you know, complaints about anything, but myself included, I suppose. No, Father. I'm not looking for any compliments, you know. I mean, I'm not the sort of man who is flattered by flattery. Absolutely <laughs> no complaints, Father. Hmm. Well, that's nice. <laughs> if you do have cause to complain about uh, my behaviour, you'll let me know, won't you? Oh, well, that's most unlikely, Father. <laughs> well, on the other hand, there was something that I... Uh... Do you have a complaint against me, Father? Well, it's not a complaint against you personally, you understand it. It's, uh, it's about your preaching. Now, what is wrong with your preaching? Everything, Father? <laughs> well, now, would I put it that way exactly? Yes, yes, I suppose I would. <laughs> For instance, you have a very bad habit of mumbling instead of opening your mouth wide. So wide that the congregation can see the inside of your socks. <laughs> well, I'll do my darndest. Very witty, Father Neil. <laughs> now, why do you preach so short? Well, I stop when I've nothing more to say. <laughs> Stops when he's nothing more to say. <coughs> you don't have to have anything to say to go on preaching, lad. <laughs> That's the whole art of it. <coughs> well, uh, thanks very much for all your help, Father. All right. I'm glad to be able to give some encouragement. <laughs> oh, but, uh, by the way, we have, uh, we have Councillor Albert Appleby coming to tea this afternoon. Oh, the next mayor? Yes. One of us and all. <laughs> I've, uh, I've still got just one or two little bumps to iron out with him, you know. Oh, yes. Well, if you prefer to have tea with him on your own, I'll, I'll go somewhere. No, 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 no. Not at all, no. You'll have to deal with mayors yourself one day. You may as well have a lesson in the best way to go about it. <laughs> For the third time, tea'll be cold. Father D must have quite a lot to iron out with Mr. Appleby. What's he like? Oh, impossible creature. Oh? Why was he elected mayor, then? Oh, I thought you meant Father D. <laughs> now, Bert, this is Father Boyd, my greatest help. <laughs> and you know my greatest hindrance. <laughs> <laughs> well, ring if you need more tea. Oh. Oh, a fine woman, that. Do you think so? Mm. Oh, I trust her with my life. But not with anything important. <laughs> well, you've done us proud, Bert. You really have. <laughs> the first Catholic mayor. Elect, mayor elect. Ah, it's all the more glory to St. Jude's. Everybody knows you as a staunch Roman Catholic. <laughs> and, uh, what would your duties be, then, oh, Bert? Opening garden fates, schools, dances, etc. Regular bottle opener, you might say. <laughs> Attending religious services? Uh, it's in my official capacity, of course. Even Anglican ones? Uh, the inauguration is always held in... Uh... Not at St Luke's Anglican Church. <laughs> it always is, Father. Uh, and I suppose you'll be appointing an Anglican minister to be your personal chaplain in place of yourself, huh? Oh, it'll break me heart, Bert. And think of the scandal to the simple faithful. Scandal? <laughs> oh. Then I'll have to make the sacrifice, won't I? All Catholics have to make sacrifices, Bert. Right, I'll resign. And it... What do you mean, resign? You haven't even taken office yet. Well, I can't be the mayor if you won't let me do the job. <laughs> Mind you, I dare say I could prevail on the council to hold the inaugurals in St. Jude's and make you my chaplain. At a small cost, mind. How much? Oh, not in money. So? Now, look, Father. There's folks like Toby Biggins on the council, real anti-Catholic he is. Now, I'll have to prove to the councillors that I'm not in the priest's pocket. And how do you propose to do that? By getting you to do something you've never done before. Which is? Playing in the doubles against the Anglicans in the clergy tennis match. <laughs> now, 
Now, uh, Bert, you wouldn't want you wouldn't want me to be gone naked as a frog in front of the grin and popular. <laughs> you play, Father? Oh, quite well. Oh, well, there you are, Father. Ah, I gave me racket away years ago. Then you can play. Oh, I've got a spare racket, Councillor. No, 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 no. I'm no longer able. No, no, no. I'm out of shape. In fact, you might say I've got too much shape. <laughs> He's being his usual modest self, counsellor. Oh, thank you, Father Neil. Oh, it's nothing. Uh, I like to give encouragement when I can. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, without me collar, I'd not feel decently dressed. It's my badge of office, you know. Oh, there, there, Father. One tennis match, and St Jude's has its first Catholic mayor. <laughs> <laughs> Ready, Father? <laughs> I'm thinking we should settle the most important thing before we begin. Yes? Who's going to keep the score? Oh, well, I will, if you like, Father. You don't trust me, eh? <laughs> I do, Father, I do. Then why are you so anxious to keep the score? Well, I'm not anxious. <laughs> I just didn't want to give you any trouble. Oh. Oh, he thinks I'm so ancient to tell me to keep a tennis score. <laughs> but, please, you keep the score. Young man, I take it as a great kindness if you'd stop telling me what to do and what not to do. Oh, just tell me what you want and I'll do it. Father Neil, do you have to be so impertinent to your elders? <laughs> you keep the score now. Come here for a gentle game of tennis. And the curate insists on turning it into a full scale war. Ready, Father? Oh, get on with it. Father? My point, I think. Oh, it landed on the line. Oh, you saw a kick over the chalk dust, did you? Well, this is a hard court. There isn't any chalk. But the utmost challenge, I suggest that the reason it did not kick up the chalk dust is because it did not land on the line at all, but over it. Oh, I'm very sorry. That's all right. There's no need to apologise. It's only a game, after all. Love 15, then? No, 15 love. I'm giving you that last point. Oh, but Father, I mean, if there's any doubt about the point, I'd rather play it again. Are you calling me a liar? There's no doubt about it at all. I'm telling you, it was definitely out. That's why I'm giving you the point. But, Father... Father Neil, I know you're not intending it, but you're putting me off my stroke. <laughs> now, I'm giving you that point, just as our blessed Lord himself would, and that's an end of it. Huh? <laughs> What's the score now? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, will you, sir? Yeah, oh! Oh, Father Neil, I'm good. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Very sorry, Father. Oh! <sighs> I'll play off. <laughs> but you do not know the score? It's 1540 in my favour. <laughs> it should be my game to love, but I'm giving you that last point. Thank you very much. Well, let's get on with it. <laughs> First service. You are sure of the score now? I wouldn't want to deprive you of any point that you have a right to. Father <laughs> Neil! I was about to suggest that you get more height on you, sir, but uh, I see there's no need. Well, let that be a lesson to you. Lesson, Father? Yes. That I can win at tennis without ever touching the ball. <laughs> Come in if you must. Father Duddleswell. I am. Who are you? I said if I had the slightest complaint, I was to come and see you. This is Mrs. Pring. She's been getting in my hair lately, too. No, Father. Not myself. <laughs> it's not so much you, it's, um... Yeah. 
Your tennis clothes. <coughs> I haven't got any. But you weren't thinking of getting, say, a, a white shirt and flannels. <laughs> Pardon me. Where would you find a pair of white flannels to cover my rotundity? <laughs> well, I expect we could manage it. Oh, then you agree that I do suffer from rotundity? Well, that's your word, not mine, Father. If I said I was an idiot, would I expect you to agree with me? <laughs> I suppose not. <clears throat> and I wouldn't have to be fitted in a shipyard for them? Let me check your size, Father. You wouldn't care to remove your cassock? I would not. Not just for a few seconds? I'll not be defrocked even for a few seconds. <laughs> to tell you the honest truth, Father Neil, the other day when we were practicing on the tennis court there, I did think that my old black trousers were feeling a bit tight under the arms and my legs. <laughs> Are you pleased with it, Father? Come in here and shut the door after you. What do you think? Um. Oh, come on, I'm not looking for compliments, be frank. <coughs> it's breathtaking, Father. You don't think it's a bit underdressed? Oh, on the contrary. Overdressed. Well, oh, just right. Do I look the part, then? Oh, every bit of it. And so shapely, Father. <laughs> How much am I in your debt? A five pound. Sweet. Jeez, a five pound? <laughs> Set of vests. Hold your tongue, woman. <laughs> what every well dressed clergyman is wearing. Mrs. Lisa. Pring. I only came to ask about the sherry for the do after the mayor's inaugural. All right, I want two bottles of sweet and four bottles of dry. And Mrs. Pring, seriously now, without prejudice, <laughs> what do I look like? The abominable snowman. <laughs> That service of inauguration has left me parched. And there's not as much here as would relieve the faintness of a cat. <laughs> Nothing stronger, I suppose. Sorry, Doctor. Only the landlord's language. <laughs> well, it's a poor house that will not hold another still. Do you drink, Father? Very little. Ah, yes. Better to lay your head where you'll find it in the morning. <laughs> I tested my water only the other day. Oh, yes. 40% proof. <laughs> I very much enjoyed that beautiful service of inauguration you gave us, Father. Well, that's very good of you to admit us. It's good to know that today the Catholics and the Anglicans are at last learning to pray together. Oh, we were not, madam. I beg your pardon? We were not praying together. It is forbidden for us to pray with Protestants. We were not praying with you. You were praying with us. <laughs> That is a very fine distinction. I'm glad you appreciate us. <laughs> well, we mustn't monopolize uh, Father. Uh, no, ah, Father Duddlesbrough, I'd like you to meet a colleague of mine, Mr. Biggins. Oh, Mr. Biggins. How do you do? The mayor tells me, Mr. Biggins, that you're an unbeliever. No, I'm an honest man. <laughs> if I'm wrong, and there is a God. I'll apologise and stand you a drink on the other side. I think it's you who'll be needing the drink on the other side, sir. You believe in hell, then? Mr. Biggins, everybody who meets me believes in hell. <laughs> Pinkerton's the name, Anglican curate. That Duddleswell's a Roman, eh? You think so? When I see him, I thank God for not making me a Catholic. Oh, you do? Well, don't you? Yes, I too thank God for not making you a Catholic. <laughs> Aren't you Tinsley, the new Methodist minister? No, I'm Boyd, Father Duddleswell's new curate. Oh, my God. You're God. Everybody's God. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, could I have your attention for a minute? Yes, why not? 
Mr. Mayor, ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed a grand occasion. Yes. 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 Fairwater is at last fortunate enough to have a Catholic mayor. And I'm delighted to say that unworthy as I am, he has chosen me to be his personal chaplain. Yeah, yeah. Well, now, I've written to the palace about this. Buckingham Palace. Oh, well done, I say. No reply and none expected. <laughs> but I've also written to Rome. And this very day I have received this message from Pope Pius XII, Secretary of State. The Holy Father sends to his beloved and obedient son, <laughs> Councillor Albert Appleby, and the entire district of Fairwater, his apostolic blessing. Oh, Ladies and gentlemen, I give you a toast. Oh, uh, toast. <laughs> His Holiness the Pope. <laughs> you sent for me, Charles? There's something very much amiss with me, Donald. Of course, it could be the start of blindness and a weak heart. <laughs> you look extremely well for someone at death's door. <laughs> Don't know. I have a feeling that I should be needing a doctor's certificate soon to say that I'm unfit to play tennis. <laughs> For a little while, at least. Well, oh, yes, well, take your jacket off anyway, Charles. I hope that'll be the end of the removals, Dono. Don't be bashful with me, Charles. I can't examine you if you're dressed like the black knight in a suit of armour. <laughs> I should have thought you could tell that I was dying faster than I decently should. Oh, I've seen worse sights before, Charles. In motor accidents, mainly, or in marble slabs in a fish shop. <laughs> Now your collar. <clears throat> you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't have a drink to hand, I suppose. I would not. Uh, what is it you are wanting from me, Charles? A doctor's certificate? <laughs> and pour your drink when you've done the necessary. <laughs> Why keep me suffering in purgatory when I should be happy in heaven? Donald, I am not a fit man. You look healthy enough to me, Charles. Of course, I could be wrong, naturally. <laughs> On the other hand, oh, oh, I can see that if you don't take care of yourself, you'll soon be stretched in the big box. <laughs> Your bad health, Charles. <laughs> the blessed certificate. They're all in good time. Come here now. Sit the softy down in the chair there. Put your tongue out and say, Ave Marie. <laughs> oh, a good for the Charles. Imagine the Anglican vicar has just walked through the door. <laughs> Oh, I say, that's a mighty weapon you got there, and no mistake. Is it right? Oh, put it away, Charles, before I get snow blindness. Here. Blow your breath on that. Well, you haven't cracked it anyway. <coughs> now, what can you see? I can see nothing but a mist. Oh, holy God, the poor allies are gone too. <coughs> God bless and save you, Charles. You know, I'm never happier than when I'm seeing double. <laughs> Except when I'm seeing treble. <coughs> now then, let me examine your gorgeous eyes. Shall I open them wide? Oh, indeed not. You're far too feeble for that. Oh, yeah. Close them now, tightly. Ah. Oh, yeah. Ah. So, you have difficulty seeing out of them? I do at the moment, yes, that's the truth. Ah, and I was so looking forward to beating the Protestants at Zenos. Ah, that's a marvellous pity and no mistake. Now, Charles, I'm going to tap your back for you. The, oh, don't do that, it hurts something off. Well, I haven't even touched you yet. Oh, it hurts even in anticipation. <laughs> well, I hope your front isn't so raw and tender. What about me heart? The heart of a lion. A very sick lion. Ah. Just put your ear to your chest and listen to yourself. <laughs> I can't hear. God, he's got sciatica too. 
And even without looking, I can tell that your knee has developed tennis elbow. <laughs> I knew you wouldn't let me down, my old friend. Oh, you can always depend on me, Charles. <laughs> there you are now. Well, I'll be off. I think that should take care of your present crisis, no doubt. <laughs> God go with you. <laughs> What's this? Three large whiskers at night and a stiff game of tennis. Uh, toss for serve. Right. Heads for you and tails for us. Oh, with respect, Father, at tennis we toss with the racket, rough or smooth. It looks like rough. Smooth. We'll serve. I got a blue playing for Oxford. A blue what, Mr. Pinkerton? <laughs> Who's going to keep score? Oh, why, uh, the umpire, of course, Father. Umpire? <laughs> Mr. Biggins? But he's an anti-Catholic. He's president of the tennis club. I tell you, he's biased. He doesn't even believe in hell. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Cobble and Pinkerton to play for the Anglicans, Duddleswell and Boyd to represent the Rovers. Father Duddleswell, if you don't mind. I must ask Mr. Duddleswell to remove that collar and dicky from round his neck. Only standard Wimbledon gear on the courts of this club. Thank you. Better do as he says, Father, or we'll be disqualified. Pinkerton to serve. Play. Fifteen luck. Over the line, I think. I would remind you, Mr. Duddleswell, that in the absence of the Pope, I say what's what on this court. <laughs> Fifteen luck. Excuse me. Gentlemen. Mr. Biggins. <laughs> What's all this? Standard Wimbledon practice. <laughs> Would you care for a drink before it's too late? <laughs> Mr. Pinkerton to serve. I'm lodging an appeal. Against the light? No, against the dark. And against you, Mr. Biggins, for cheating. Mr. Pinkerton to serve. It's no use. We can't play the Anglicans and the Devil's Disciple as well. <laughs> First chance you can toss a ball at me. Gently, mind, so I'm too wounded to go on with the match. Why you hurt badly, Father? Oh, thank God, Father, that you're just bad enough. 